This is a church that is internationally recognised within, um, you know, the, the circles of those who know about it. In Simon Jenkins' Thousand Best Churches, it's one of the highest ranked, highest rated of the parish churches. Before we go in, I'll just give you a kind of little external shot, just so you can get it in, 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 in the sense of the building, largest 15th century that we're going to look at. With a wonderful, look at that blue sky now. And some of the stained glass is no longer there because it's been taken out, but a lot of it is there. Simon, so we're going to look at the, the stained glass up close. We'll hopefully get into the, the anchorage area as well, the home of a hermit. This is where we came back the other week. We're going to talk about John Snow, his monument just over there. But look at these wonderful parish houses that form part of this kind of complex. So this really is, you're right in the heart now of historic York. We're just by the river. So without further ado, let's go and spend some time in All Saints, North Street. Hopefully find, they're expecting us. <laughs> it is done, it's really incredible. So we've got the lovely green balloon saying, you're welcome, come on in. Edwin Ridsdale Tate, a lot of work reconfiguring this church, the council screen, which we're gonna have a look at in detail. But uh, as Simon was saying, it's the stained glass this place is famed for. So some of the stained glass isn't actually uh, present at the moment, um, but there is enough. The two most famous windows are there, which we're going to have a look at. Um, and the beautiful thing about this church is because whilst the, the glass here is every bit as good as the Minster, it's at what you might call a very human level. In other words, you can get up to your eye level. So it's going to be fantastic for you to be able to see up close, fantastic medieval stained glass. Some of the very, very best stained glass you're going to see anywhere. Let's have a look at now. So can we just first off say hello to Dr. Ruth from All Saints, who has very, very kindly agreed to show us. Can you just switch that on, clip that onto yourself? So there's a little switch on the side. I'll just give you a first, a little scan. How marvellous is this? It is absolutely wonderful. So if you click that on, yeah, you, you, and if you just want to say something, it's a big, big, loud voice. Anyway, anyway, you can just hold it if you like. Yeah. If that makes I'll sense. hold it. Yeah. So we like we like big booming voices on here. Go. So I'll just. Uh, Hello. Hi. Just give you a little wave, everybody. <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. They can see and hear so you. Okay. You can hear me. Fantastic. Yeah, nice okay. To see you all. <laughs> so brilliant. So thank you so much for agreeing to to be a part of York Unlocked, but be of course allowing us to kind of come in and do kind of live stream um, to the to the audience that we've got on here. So um, we've got. A little bit of time here, we, so yeah, we, we sort of spend some time. What I'd kind of start with, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the, the church? You know, kind of, we, we know it comes from monastic tradition originally, right? Yeah, yeah, and we think there's been um, a building consecrated for worship on this site for probably more than a thousand years. Wow. Um, so the building kind of fits with the Roman street plan, although the earliest historical mention is 1089. Yep. Um, so the earliest mention in records. Um, so it's not mentioned in the Doomsday Book? I don't think so. No, right. sure Holy, Holy Trinity up the road is, isn't it? Right, okay. so, so there's quite possibly a link between those yeah. at, at, at yeah. that time. Yeah, and we do have a Roman pillar, which we think has kind of been reused, um, which is just within the... Can we look at the Roman pillar? Would that be okay? Yeah, of course. So look at... And I believe that the uh, these wonderful carvings up here um, have come from a different church. Is that correct? I believe they came from St. Saviour's Church. Yes. That's yeah, what Dr. Richards right. was saying yeah. when I was here the yeah, other day. Yeah, And then the chancel screen was um, early 20th century by E. Risdale Tate. Isn't that wonderful? And look at the intricacy, the care that's gone into this carving. It's quite phenomenal, isn't it? That is absolutely beautiful. And unusually, when we look at the ceiling here, we've got a lot of very bright vibrant colours. Yeah, so this is kind of what the medieval church would actually have been like. Um, we kind of see a lot of post-Reformation um, churches and we kind of see them as being quite plain, but um, this was very much part of the kind of using colour to show the glory of God. So uh, at the, before the Reformation, most churches would have been like a blaze of colour, wouldn't yes, they? Uh, yeah. In common with how, quite a lot of Catholic churches are to this day. Yeah. But the Reformation came, then of course under Edward the Sixth, the order was come out to kind of whitewash it, wasn't it? Yeah. And quite a few churches now have been able to remove haven't they, the whitewashes and, and yeah. actually, you know, find frescoes and so forth. So this has been very much restored to how it would have been yeah. in its heyday. Yeah, what we think it probably would have been like at that, that period. So this one's the Roman pillar, just here. 
So this is the Roman element. So let me just go for the zoom there. So do we think that this was just pretty re- utilised, if you like? Do I you think mean, that, reclaimed. Yeah, yeah. That, that was kind of, you know, that's a, a, a useful piece of kit. So let's, yeah. kind of, let's, let's bring that yeah. into the kind of building fabric. So this, obviously, then we're looking at the, the, the main altar. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we've got, who would be, who would utilise the uh, the seating here? Is there, is there a college? Uh, um, uh, who, who would be, uh, so the seats here, are they reserved for any particular... Purpose, or are they just? Um, I don't think so. Not as far as I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it could be the, the servers and things. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Robert may know more than that. That's <laughs> all right. Don't worry. It, it, it's just it's the, the sheer visual appeal of this yeah. church. What is unusual um, is that compared to a lot of uh, Anglican churches, you have the Stations of the Cross, which yes. again, more typically you find in Catholic. Yeah, and um, I think the worship here is kind of. Um, it's very high Anglican. Yeah. It's um, very Catholic in its tradition. So there's, you know, there's incense, there's some mass. Um, so that's kind of very much part of the kind of tradition of the church, but also it's kind of ongoing worship. So we we, we already sort of started talking outside about the stained glass, which is has been beautifully kind of restored very very recently. Anglo Roman, absolutely, uh, Josephine. So yeah, high Anglican is, is a kind of term that, that tends to mean. Um, so you have masses in Latin and so forth as well at um, times. The, the, Last, no, sorry, the masses are in English. Yeah. It's the English Missal. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, but they are often sung. Um, we have a lot of music in the church for that. So this window here is, a, is one of a pair that is very, very, very significant, right? Mm-hmm. And if you want to kind of understand, I've brought people in here many times over the years, and there is no better way of explaining the medieval Catholic mindset, particularly of the wealthy, than to look at this window, because what we've got here is we believe to be Nicholas Blackburn, who was a Lord Mayor and was a very, very wealthy prominent citizen. And um, if you look at him, what he's being seen to do is, a bit like we were talking earlier about Elizabeth Fry in prison, he's there with the beggar. You see the guy with the staff? He's handing out food. He's with the sick in this bed. He's giving succour. He's distributing out. He's pouring, so he's not, you see there in this window here. He's not too proud to get his hands dirty. He's, yeah. he's, he's so physically involved in charity. And this is a great sort of demonstration of um, people being seen to do the right things. That the, the Catholic faith, the medieval Catholic faith, see the guys who are in stocks here, look, you see? So they're prisoners. So he's bringing drinks to them. He's not condemning them. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. assisting them. Yeah. So he, it's a kind of displays that, you know, of kind of charity in action mm-hmm. of, of a, a religion that was based on kind of stuff. Yes, these are kind of the main sort of seven acts of, of charity that a good Christian was supposed to be performing. Yep. Um, and I think the other one is remembering the dead, but this window is there as a kind of remembrance of the dead, so it doesn't show that one. So just see the sign sheet. So this window dates from about, around about 1410. It gives you kind of a sense of 600 years, you know, in age and beautifully. So recently they've been taken out these windows and, and, and restored, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so we had some money from the Heritage Lottery Fund um, and they've paid for the, the windows to be taken out and restored at Barley Studios in Dunnington. Yep. Um, and we've also kind of installed um, atothermic glass on the outsides, which now means that they're kind of protected for the future. So they're not exposed to the elements anymore. So absolutely remarkable, is it, that they've survived mm. at all? But of course it takes restoration to, to keep them up. But um, so just ask how the colours stay so vibrant. I mean, I, I guess it's the production method, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what the kind of medieval glazes were using to kind of stain those, but they are absolutely stunning, the colours still, and yeah, remained really vibrant. And we've not, um, when they've been being restored, they have been kind of restored to as close as, as we can tell they are, so nothing's been done without kind of evidence. So, as soon as they, so they've not been brightened up, you know, they've been kind of... Indeed. It's just the attitude in the first place. Yeah. Um, Susan says he wasn't very modest, this Nicholas Blackburn, was he? He was quite, quite no. keen to be seen yeah. doing the right thing, wasn't he? So yeah. he, he does... Um, but we contrast it with this window over here. By the way, look, look at this floor. Look at this, by the way. We, we, we've been spoiled with floors. We've in the bar confident we were buying right. their floors. We've yeah. been in House of Micklegate. So this is absolutely sumptuous, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so these are as close as we could get to the kind of originals. So these are were made in Europe. Um, Absolutely. So we had to get that sort of to, to Europe to get something that was sort of similar to what, what would have been there previously. Beautiful, isn't it? The glaze on it is something else. It really is. And we've got little, little animals here. It's always nice to see uh, little beastries around, isn't it? So. 
Well, there's, is this a hunting scene that I'm going on? It looks like it, yeah. There's, Doesn't it? There's yeah. deer. Yeah. It's definitely a deer. I was wondering if they'd... Is that, that, is that a dog, I think, that's going to chase them? Yeah, through, like, yeah. Through coursing. Yeah. I think it is, isn't it? So a little bird in a nest there. So before we look at this over here, we've got a little, um, is it a little shrine, you call it down here? Yes, so we've got the, the kind of shrine to the Virgin Mary. Oh, and down here, this is um, a statue. And I don't know the date of this statue, but um, Robert will be able to tell us. The capture the lighter. Beautifully lit, isn't it? Yeah. Just looks amazing. Yeah. So this is a parish church now, right? Yeah, yeah, so it's still active. So it's still active congregation in here, so people are coming to worship. So obviously you've got a main uh, altar there. You've got yeah. the, Chapel, is this what you describe it as? Yeah, so this is, this is often used for kind of Thursday masses. Yeah, so sort of slightly more intimate, as you might say. Yes, this is the Lady Chapel. The Lady Chapel. Um, uh, so this window kind of shows various scenes from kind of the life of the Virgin Mary as well. Okay, so... So let's just go, go in on the Zoom and see what we can... So we can see. So again, what I was saying earlier is, is what's nice about this church is that the social's on eye level almost. You know, you're yeah. not having to... It's not something that, that rears up you're so far above you that you can't sort of pick out the detail. You've got a fantastic option just to really kind of feast your eyes, haven't you, on... Uh... Yeah. And again, there's one like the purple just stands out so beautifully, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's You know, that artistry was so fortunate in York. And, and this, of, of all the churches, you, you have this remarkable collection. So we were looking earlier, obviously, at the, uh, yeah. the painted angels up here. By contrast, we can see... The unpainted, so that's an interesting sort of study, isn't it, between the same which popped through there, if you went, has just joined. We were admiring a few minutes ago the painted angels in the ceiling that was very much something that had been kind of frowned upon after the Reformation, where they become much more simplistic. So you can see the kind of results here of the kind of stripped down version of how much plainer and austere it looks. But given it's, as you say, high Anglican, you know, yeah. almost crossover isn't it, into, into the kind of Catholic, you, you've got much more strident colours in here. Yeah. It's an absolute feast of the eyes. Sometimes they look creepier, not painted. They do a bit, don't they? They look sort of slightly more demonic, don't they? But uh, <laughs> believe me, the, 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 the they are angelic. Bit, uh... Oh, yeah, look at that one with the, with the shadow. That does look creepy, doesn't it? So. <laughs> I was like a bit creeped out. <laughs> so this window, of course, is the second um, of this kind of pair, dating from a very recent, similar time, 1410. And this is portraying the end of the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so it's the last 15 days of the world. The last 15 days of the world. As described in the kind of old English poems. So, the, and, and there's, you know, around this time, there's a very sort of fervent millennial belief, isn't it, that the world is going to end. Yeah. And so, if we look at these two windows together, so you can see there, like, you know, the, the, the death is visiting, which come in and give you some zoom. This sense of being seen to do the right thing is really important, isn't it? If you think the world is going to end. Yes, yeah, so this is called the prick of conscience. So, yeah. so, you're kind of thinking about where you want to be in kind of your spiritual life. Yeah. The world and the world, you know, in days. flames, the seas are drying up, you know, the. the the grounds are opening up. You know, it, it's a vision. You see the, the ossuary there with the bones. You know, it really is a kind of portrayal of fear and anxiety, isn't it? That, you know, you have to get this right because otherwise, you know, the, the damnation is, is a very, very real thing for these people, isn't yeah. it? This, this isn't a kind of, um, so you see them all down here kind of praying. So that's yeah, the, the response. Are, um... The people who are pictured nearly at the bottom are usually people that contributed to the windows. Yeah. So which again is one of the things that people do as a, a way of trying to sort of save their, their mortal soul. Uh, kind of contributing to the glorification of God through the church. So there is text in here that's obviously explaining what's happening on each of the days. But uh, pretty sort of scary. It's a resolution of global warming, absolutely. It does. But I mean, it, it, it's... It's very much driving fear, isn't it? I mean, that, that's, that's central to what people are to get from this, isn't yeah. it? Is you know, this is very, very real. This is going to happen. And you, you need to be ready. You know, so in terms of obedience, yeah. because of prayer, observances, and so forth. And charity. <laughs> Absolutely. So some people then took that to, what am I call, I'm not going to say extreme lengths, but certainly very, very dedicated yeah. and took to a life of isolation. Yeah. Can we talk a little about that? Yeah, so um, we'll go up and have a look at the anchor hold yeah um the anchor hold we have here now is a reconstructed version from the 20th century very early 20th century yeah um but there has been previously a medieval anchor hold on that site yeah um 
the most famous of our medieval anchorites was Emma Rotten. Emma Rotten, right. Um, so in the, 90, uh, sorry, the 1420s, yep. she lived in the anchor hold here. Okay, so we're going to get there in a minute. But just before we do, let's just have a quick look at this, this wonderful pulpit that we've got, which again, extraordinarily decorative. Um, absolutely, Casey, and life's not rehearsal. You've got to get this, this kind of right first time. Yeah, this beautiful lectern as well. Wonderful. Everything, I mean, everywhere you look is a feast for the eyes, this church, isn't it? It is an extraordinary sort of treasure trove that you have. And um, so wonderful, of course. And I, I know this as, as a guide, I've brought so many people in here. Um, uh, and many of you have been able to leave a little cash the yeah. uh, thing about it. But people can't believe this is open to the public. Yeah. And that, you know, you don't need vast rates of security, that people respect this space yeah. and, and, and can enjoy spending time here. But it's, it's a great success story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we're very lucky that we are able to be open and it isn't... Um, isn't abused that kind of openness at the church. So again, w would these be sort of family crests of, of donors over the years we're looking at? Do you think? Um, yeah, and one of the crests on here actually is, I think, of the Earls of Warwick, which oh. relates to Emma Rawton's story. Okay, so let's pick up the story. So, yeah. so Emma Rawton, um, it's not enough for Emma Rawton just to, to, to observe the Catholic faith. She feels that she needs to withdraw from the world. Yeah, so she lived in the anchor hold here, which was a kind of building attached to the, the church. Um, we think from the kind of archaeological remains, it was a two-story building, so she would have had a little bit of space. Yeah. Um, and she had these two squints to kind of access life in the church. So one of which was kind of, um, we'll see it in a few minutes, but you can look out from that and see the um, see the altar so you could watch the services. Fantastic. So let's go up. So, so what we're talking about here then is, is a building that's sort of built onto the side of the building. It might go outside at the end and so yeah. it make it a bit easier to, 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 to show. But actually, if you look through this window here, because this window is clear, there's no stained glass, it's relatively easy to, to kind of make out. So you can just see there this what sort of extension, I suppose, for want of a better description, which you believe would have been significantly larger. Yeah, we think it was probably larger in Emma's time. Um, we have had people live in the one as it is now. So in the 20th century, we've had two anchorites. Um, it's Adeline Cashman. And then Brother Walter as Brother, well. Yeah. He lived there until the 60s, so fairly uh, recently. If you go on YouTube, yeah. there, there's a wonderful video um, that I think he was made by Alan Wicker. Yeah. Have you, have you seen that video? I've not seen it personally, but Excuse I've seen people say they've watched yeah. it. So. Hello there. So this space that we're coming into is um, a space that was um, a residential area, believe it or not. And when you see the size of it, yeah, you yeah. are going to be uh, somewhat taken. Do you want to, to lead the way? And yeah, then, uh, of course, yeah. Was it used to have two stories? Yes, yeah. yes. We think it's always had two stories. Yeah. Because um, from the lower story, there was originally another opening where um, the anchorite could receive food and donations and give blessings and yeah. kind of impart wisdom to the, the parishioners. So believe it or not, this space here, which is lovely and toasty warm actually because it houses the boilers <laughs> over here, which is a, a great place to put them. But this was an area where brother Walter lived wasn't it this, yeah. this was this yeah. was the entirety of it and I mean let me just kind of stand here that I'm sort of put my finger here look okay and I, my finger on that side you know so it's probably what we're talking two people wide two people wide somewhere in that kind of region and he spent you know his life of division would be sitting here yeah reading studying scripture and then you were saying earlier about squint. So tell us, what's a squint for? So you can look out of there and you can watch the services through there. So if you were living a life of isolation, you don't actually have to go down into the... So that. look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Obviously, the, the Wi-Fi little booster there is <laughs> just slightly blocking away. But I mean, isn't that... the in the modern there. Yeah, well, but again, of course, churches have got to work, haven't they? They've got to work yeah. in the modern era as well. So so he was able to... And, 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 and the, the previous... Elizabeth, what was her name, sorry? Uh, there's Adeline Cashman That's right. in the 20th century, and then previously it was the medieval one, um, Emma, Rotten. Emma Rotten. So we believe that when she was here, this building would have been somewhat larger. We think it was probably a little bit bigger, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, this, this current building is also interesting because it's one of the first um, concrete domestic dwellings. Right, okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what the word is, um, but there's, um, it's just the... The lines across. I forgot what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's unusual in that regard as well. Everywhere you look in here, there's just those wonderful bits of art and colour. And that'd be St. Francis, I'm guessing, with yeah, the, all the animals, yeah? Yeah. So we talk about the Franciscans, oh, quite a lot on these tours. Let's pop back down into the main body of the church. 
And uh, if we may, we shall have a quick look at uh, those wonderful vestments. It's the, 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 the Berettas sitting here. Uh, so, Dr. Ruth was mentioning earlier that this is high anchor. So, you know, so you mean about incense? I think do we see an incense burner? Yes, yeah, there is. Yeah, incense is so used. Yeah. So we've got. Uh, so those who've been to Catholic services will be very sort of familiar with this. When I grew up, uh, an Anglo Irish family, and, and the, the, the older people would be very familiar with this sort yeah. of form of worship. Yeah, know. I mean, I've been to a service here, and I grew up Catholic, and so it's you, very similar. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and. and uh, but of course, the capital secret in turning your back in the tabernacle. You're not looking at yeah. it. <laughs> and over here, look, we have, look at this row of berettas. And we have, of course, over here, purple meaning a bishop, right? Yeah, yeah. And we have a bishop in residence? Yeah, Bishop Glyn Webster. Bishop he's Glyn Webster charge, yeah. is the priest in charge here. So is he Bishop of Selby, is that? Uh, he was Bishop of Beverly. Beverly, Beverly. Right. Earlier this year, yeah. So again, we have a beautiful look at the, look at the stunning quality of... The vestments are absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And again, a wardrobe over here, all hanging up to be different ones we want for different occasions. Yes, and they're going to yeah. big high masses and, and, and yeah. the, the holy days and so forth. And again, just lovely little icon type artwork up here. So let's have another walk down the other side of the church. So, so this this staff with the, the procession on. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Look at the, again the quality. So this is still, as I say, it's, it's, you know, active um, yeah, still a busy work faith community. Yeah, yeah. So weekly masters. Yeah, twice weekly. So twice weekly um, masters. Yeah, there's um, Thursday lunchtime and Sunday yeah. evenings. Oh, look at that! Jesus who was baptised by the Bishop of Beverly. Oh. <laughs> Regular right, Webster, fantastic. Um, so again, we've got a font now. So a, a medieval font, but I believe that the cover is 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 more, is, is, is more recent, isn't it? So, uh, but again, look at that! Isn't that amazing? So can we have a walk down this side? Because so obviously this side is, is, is a good deal sort of plainer. In some respects, it's almost like at the moment, it's, it's almost like two churches in one, isn't it? Because this is so much closer to the kind of post-Reformation austere look, isn't it, as you might say. Although we will be getting some of our stay back next week, so that'll Yeah, it, it won't stay that way. But uh, but, but again, it, it's, it's a wonderful kind of study in contrast. It's yeah. beautiful again. Statue. So again, we've got the unadorned, the plain angels on this. Is, is there plans to decorate those, or is it just is, it, is the um, idea I to keep them? I think they'll probably be left as they are yeah. for now. Yeah. Um, now, one of the one of the absolute treats for tour guides, sadly, is not not with us today, is yeah. he? <laughs> if you keep your eyes open, uh, what you can find here is a, there's a stained glass window normally here. Um, well, I'll let you say what, what, what's the unique thing about the, the stained glass window that's normally so here. It's, it's the nine orders of angels, but yep. the unusual thing that's in that is um, there's an image of a, a medieval gentleman wearing spectacles. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and we believe from the first betrayals anyway, don't yeah, we? Yeah. And look at this again. It's a wonderful kind of crest here, but at the moment we've got a sort of memento mori kind of thing going on here, haven't we? At the bottom with the with the yeah, skull. So it's, a, it's a memorial for a donor, I think. So, yeah, it has that again that remembrance that you're mortal and. Need to think about what what's on your country. And again, that was, that was very fashionable, wasn't yeah, it? For you putting yeah. transit tombs and so forth. Yeah. These are depictions of you know the, 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 what happens to our remains, yeah. as you might say, the kind of mortal remains. But what interests me over here, and I know we can't see so much, but I'd just like to kind of show you, is, is we have um, the Ten Commandments on both sides. So again, as you can see here, there is um, you know obviously work going on here, and so we're, we're not showing its best light. So these boards here, if I just come in, you might have to just sort of see. But again, this is very much kind of post-reformation, isn't it? Suddenly, everything's in English. Yeah. You meant to know it, you meant to understand it. It's not now for the priest to mm. tell you what to do. Is it? This is about you. That's the scripture. They're the rules. Yeah. yeah. Learn them. <laughs> Follow them. So it's a very, very kind of different form of Christianity is emerging, isn't it? Yeah. Where you're responsible for your own soul. Yeah. Um, and so you know the, the the next church we're going to go to a bit later on has, has got a lot of these boards up as well. So it's a real kind of referencing mm. how people's faith. Changed from being in Latin, yeah, being very mysterious, to no, no, this is the rules, this is the code, yeah. you, you've got to follow this, you know, it's, it's up to you to get this right, because if you don't, 
well, we can see, you know, from the windows, you know, what's going to kind of happen. So Yeah, it makes for an interesting mix. It does. One of the things that the windows are there for is to kind of communicate to the, the non-literate these things as well. And that's really important, isn't it? Because at, 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 in the medieval time, when, when this church would have been in its kind of heydays, you might say, um, most people wouldn't have spoken Latin. They wouldn't have necessarily understood all the ins and outs of what was being said, would they? Yeah, so I think this was probably quite an unusually literate parish just because it was um, mainly kind of merchant class people. Yes. Um, and we can actually see, if uh, we look at the east window, um, all the women in this window are reading, um, which is quite interesting, just as a kind of women's history point of view. Um, so you Definitely. So Anne reading to Let's just get to a, on the biggest zoom. So which, which, is that on the left-hand side? That's the, the kind of middle one, I think. It's an Anne reading to Mary. So it's an unusual depiction of the, the image. Oh, sorry, up, 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 right. Yeah, right, I'm reading. Yeah, 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 yeah. young Virgin Mary. Oh, I see. Oh, that's unusual. You don't often see her as a child, do you? No, no. So it's, yeah, that's unusual in itself. And then also because they're, they're both reading. But then in the lower pictures, um, the, the, the female donors that are pictured are also reading. So it's kind of inferring that she married below herself with Josie, then, isn't it? <laughs> she, she was literate. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so isn't that something? Yeah, I, I, I'm not even aware. Jim says St. Christopher, uh, he believes, is being depicted within yeah. this, is that? Yeah, yeah. St. Christopher's with the um, fish under his feet. The fish under his feet? Which one are we looking at? It's hard to see it now. It's quite hard to see in this line. Is that the third one? Because mm. I'm on Zoom, so we've we have got to, right. the capacity to... To look a bit closer on the right. So Jim's is on the right. So thank you, Jim. So he's got a staff. Is that is that the same Christian Christopher the Traveller? Then is that the? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and he's carrying on his shoulder. Isn't that beautiful? And again, just look at the uh, the top sections. It's an absolute riot of colour. It really is um, such a treat to uh, to what to bring you. He's he carried the Christ Child of the River, says Jim. Oh, thank you, Jim, for for adding that to. So that that's. So we've got depictions of, of, of Christ as a child and Mary as a child. Um, so are we able to to work out with this very educated crowd that we've got on who the first on the left-hand side would be then? Who this saint is? He's been demoted. Who's been demoted, Paul? Thank you, Linda. So again, you can see from this side now, carvings, as I say, these, these came from, we know, a Christian devotion from St. Saviour's Church. But again, just the quality, just the detail. Oh, look at these faces. I've never seen those before. Faces up here. Maybe Gospel writer Matthew. Well, he's holding a pen, so that is uh, quite possible. <laughs> Absolutely. So, that's quite creepy, that, isn't it? The two faces. Do you know what that's about? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think they're kind of sort of... Um grotesque. Mm, they do appear to, don't they? Yeah. Um, so the, I believe the kind of religious function of the kind of funny faces is about kind of laughing the devil away, sort of thing. With, yes, um, it's a mocking joy is, Yeah, yeah. Joy is the kind of enemy of the devil and um, yeah. like music as well, so a lot of the angels are playing music and that's also about kind of joy as the, the antithesis of, of evil. Yeah, but they're like superiors, aren't they? The angels, really. Yeah. They've got the, 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 the they have the power to do battle, don't they? You know, yeah. With 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 anything that kind of Satan can throw at them. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, Saint Michael's out at the moment, but he's depicted in all in all, in all of his armor and kind of defeating Satan. Well, he's the guy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He, he gets to judge, doesn't he? At the end, Saint Michael yeah. with his scales, <laughs> isn't it? On Judgment Day. So this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. The Green Man too. What, the Green Man in in the windows. Or is that talking to somebody else, Josephine? Sorry. Oh, there is a green man in the car. Oh, I see. You mean the, the green man up here? I just see me. Where is it? He's, so, there we go. Which, of course, is quite a strong pagan symbol, isn't it? The, the yeah. fertility and, and sort of old belief systems related. So there's, there's yeah. really a kind of, kind of cornucopia here, isn't there? I mean, there's a, such a blend of different symbols of kind of different ideas. Um, but it just melds together so wonderfully well. Just going to get a nice shot of the uh, the bells. You got um, the bells ring out? Yes, yes. Yeah, so we quite often have kind of Lucasfilm bell ringers, um, <clears throat> so people come and yeah, ring the bells for us quite frequently. It's a wonderful. Collection of the bell for above. And uh, 
I don't have access to it at the moment. No, no, no. The uh, bell tower is uh, very steep and very narrow, so just through that little tiny door. So perhaps on a future tour, we can uh, yeah. we can we can get together. Like we do for Selby, we can come behind the scenes and spend a bit more time here and uh, raise some money for this fantastic church and uh, get to see some bits we can't see today. But thank you, <laughs> you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And we're using a spin you round. Uh, if everybody can uh, just give Dr. Ruth thank you. a wave of thank you. Thanks so much. For spending some time. <laughs> there we go. They're all popping in from different parts of the world. <laughs> to Florida there, like you see. Wow. Super Oklahoma Homer in the US. So I'm really glad you could all join us, especially those Florida. who are really early in the Peter morning. Peter in Brisbane, look at Australia there for you. Wow. <laughs> and Pennsylvania, Candice, as well. So thank you so much thank for, you for so letting me come in. Friends, you can cover the microphone you, yeah. back. And uh, we're going to go to the Guildhall next. Brilliant.